Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Jimenez, principal of Sarah High School. I want to take the opportunity to welcome everyone here. Um, thank everyone for coming to our uh, to this important press conference. It's important to note the number of people in attendance and the concern that everyone has regarding the same issue, the budget crisis uh, the state is currently wrapped it, wrapped up in, and how it's uh, impacting our students. These are extraordinary times and trying times for everyone, in particular people involved in public service, law enforcement, fire department, other state and local agencies, and of course education, all of which will impact everyone, in particular our teachers, our staff, and most importantly our students, the future of the state of California. Joining us today are several members of the state senate, will be um, Senator, Senate President Pro Tem Don Parada, Senator Denise uh, um, moreno Duchaney, Senator Christine Kehoe, Senator Gloria Romero, Senator Jack Scott. Um, also with us are, uh, are Catherine Nakamura, uh, President of the Board of Education, um, Jack Leaf, a uh, business leader in the area, uh, other school officials, and some local parents and teachers. I want to thank them for taking the time to be here with us today. You will hear from, uh, from, from the parents, the students, the staff about their concerns and about how the budget will impact school programs. You'll also hear from the uh, state senators and their concerns and ideas about what we can do to address the budget crisis here. Again, thank you all for coming. At this time, I would like to introduce a parent of, Sarah, of, uh, of a student here at Sarah High School, Miss Dana Brown. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. As a parent, I'd like to share with you the, some statistics on the reality of your child and our children. Governor Schwarzenegger has recommended a $4.4 billion cut for K through 14 education for 2008-2009 school year plus $400 million cut from 2007-2008 current year budget in addition to the suspension of Prop 98. What does this mean to our children? Reducing per student spending by more than $800. We already spend $1,900 per pupil less than the national average. Here at Sarah High, that translate into $1,680,000. We have eight schools in our feeder cluster. You can realize the impact on our community alone. California is 46th in the nation in per pupil spending, down from 43rd just two years ago. Increasing class sizes statewide by as much as 35%, laying off more than 107,000 teachers, laying off over 137,000 bus drivers, janitors, food service workers, maintenance workers, and other education support professionals. Cutting more than $24,000 per classroom. Eliminating music, art, and career technical education programs statewide. With California schools, public schools having more than 6.2 million students enrolled in 2006-2007, California has the worst ratio in our nation of K through 12 student to school counselors. The best state is Rhode Island with 600 students, 60 students per one counselor. California, 920 students to one counselor. California has substantially fewer teachers and administrators to serve our students than the average state in America. California high school graduation rate is 68.9%. One out of three students is not graduating from high school. With nearly one out of three youth dropping out of school with virtually a hopeless future, how will they survive? How will they provide for themselves? How will they provide for their families? And how will they contribute and give back the gifts that they're born with to our community? Many of those underskilled and undereducated youth will move into a life of crime to survive. Projected 80% of all 
federal prisoners and 75% of youth in our juvenile court system are high school dropouts. It costs us an estimated $51,000 per year to house an inmate. Yet, California is the eighth wealthiest economy on our globe compared to countries. California standards are some of the highest in our nation. No Child Left Behind continues to raise the bar 10% until you, year 2014 for student achievement while resources and relationships are being cut and removed from our children's learning communities. Even though our schools academically improve, they are not good enough and they are called failures. This is a phenomenal opportunity for our public elected officials to let us know exactly how they feel about our children, to let us know they value education, they value the emo emotional, mental, physical health and well-being of our children, address the needs of the whole child. They are not a commodity or they are the greatest natural resource we have is our children. Expand the curriculum beyond testing of just one intelligence. We have several. Support our educators and our school staffs. Manage this crisis. Our schools are in crisis today, and if this happens for the next 18 months, here's what you can do about it. We need everyone here is a part of the solution. You're here because you care about children and your voice matters and within 30 seconds in a global society in this information age your voice can make a difference it is this easy california pta www.capta.org home page shows you flunk the budget click on it it'll show you how to reach your governor or your local elected officials click on it type in your zip code click on it put your name in hit click send you're done put it as a draft in your computer have your children put it as a draft in their computer tell your neighbors start a family competition do five minutes a day every single family community everyone five minutes a day you will reach everyone here everyone in sacramento and be a voice for your child and our children our future our legacy i have a handout that is available for anyone interested all of these uh, statistics have where they are from institutes research whatever I, if you would like this handout and how easy how easy it is to be a voice on behalf of your child and all children i also have a handout that shows you all of the information for your local public officials in sacramento and san diego so in closing the final question should always be what is in the best interest of all children we welcome our new san diego unified school district superintendent dr greer this is his first week he spoke at a recent leadership breakfast of one of the most important things to him is relationships. As you know, it doesn't, programs don't change students, relationships do. Relationships are being removed from our schools. It's hurting your child, it's hurting all children. We have to raise our voice. Your awareness, your advocacy, and your action from this day forward is gonna make an impact and have a difference. Parents have to try harder please allow me to briefly share I've been on a school site council from elementary middle and high school at a recent for over 10 years at a recent school board meeting the principal had to several times stop and gain her composure because there's faces and meaningful relationships behind these journal entries on a piece of paper called budget cuts and I hold all these individuals in high esteem. 
And as she's explaining what, we are un what our children's reality will be for the next 18 months, one of the teachers said, we just have to try harder next year. The ones who have to try harder are us, parents. Takes an entire village to raise these children. We have a personal responsibility from here on out for weeks to come to not let them forget, leave our children alone. Would government, would government mandate our corporate world and our non-private sector and increase their demands but take away their resources and call them a failure when they don't succeed? Shame on them, shame on us if we don't do something about this. In life, it's not ambiguous, it's simple. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. From this day forward, I thank you for being here because I know in my heart you're part of the solution. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce to you Colleen Stevenson. I have the opportunity to work with her with a group of student leaders here at Sarah High, and she is the president of Elevated Save, Students Against Violence Everywhere, and these youth are exactly who you are. They're part of the solution on this campus, and their voice matters, and so does yours. She's also president of ASB. She's a phenomenal young lady, and she's a true leader on behalf of her peers, Colleen Stevenson. Good afternoon, my name is Colleen Stevenson and I'm the Associated Student Body President here at Sarah High. On behalf of the entire Sarah High student body, I would like to welcome you all to our school and we sincerely appreciate you being here. It reflects your concerns the budget will have on our school and we want you to know that we the students are deeply concerned as well. I would now like to take this time and share with you the students' worries the budget cuts will take on our school. A primary concern is the effect it will have on our current teachers. If there is a lack of supplies, will our teachers have to take even more money out of their own pockets just so they can pay for our paper, pencils, and notebooks? And if that amount of supplies isn't enough, will our students have to supply them as well? Will it become acceptable that schools organize supply drives just so they can have enough paper to go around? We also worry about the loss of our newer and younger teachers. Although we cherish and appreciate our older, more experienced teachers, the depletion of youthful enthusiasm could propose a challenge. Students can connect with these teachers and staff members on a different level than our teachers with tenure. This connection is strong and positive and creates a powerful feeling of school community. Without this connection, students lose the desire to better themselves, better those around them, and better their school. We are also uncertain of the future of our extracurricular activities, such as yearbook, associated student body, newspaper, and band. These not only offer creative outlets for our students, but give them a chance to showcase their abilities outside of the academic curriculum. Extracurriculars help develop a sense of pride and are beneficial towards a fulfilling high school experience. We understand that all of these things cost money, and the position we are all in is not easy for any of us. Still, it is important that our schools are viewed as an investment into the future. We will be the ones in the labs and research centers in the fire stations and police departments. We will be in the hospitals and the courthouses. We will be the small business owners and we will build the roads and buildings. We are California's future and we are worth the investment. Hello, my name is Erin Clark. I'm a teacher here at Sarah High School. I've taught here for several years. I'm a tenured teacher with the San Diego Unified School District. I've taught in the English and History departments here at Sarah. I've chaired the Social Science Department. I teach AP World History. I teach journalism. And on May 12th, I received a layoff notice informing me that my services that I provide to the children of San Diego Unified School District may no longer be necessary. 
And the worst thing is, is not the effect that this has on me and my family, financially or emotionally. The worst thing is the effect that this will have on my students. I, uh, I advise a serendipity newspaper. And yesterday, I was at the countywide write-off association award ceremony. One of my students received first place countywide as a photojournalist. Yeah. Our newspaper placed in the top 10 countywide. We received sixth place, which is a wonderful accomplishment. And all I could think about as I received the certificate was that this program may not exist next year. And that's the tragedy of our situation. I implore anyone who has the ability to intervene on behalf of teachers and students in this district to do so. And that's all of you. Make a phone call, send an email, write a letter, and vote for our children. Thank you. I'm Camille Zomber. I'm president of the San Diego Education Association. I'm proud to represent and defend teachers like those here at Sarah High School. Educators across San Diego are bracing for the impact of massive cuts to our schools and services because of our governor's slash and burn budget. We all have had to scramble to respond to one political speech he made in January. In San Diego Unified, over 900 talented and dedicated teachers, nurses, librarians, and counselors have been told they will have no jobs next year. Overworked school staffs are bracing for even bigger classes, fewer resources, and less of the help they need to do their important work. Parents and students are wondering what will happen next year with fewer adults caring for San Diego's children. Hiring these 900 educators from as far back as 1999 and hiring, and fi hiring the over 1,000 school support staff who will soon receive their own layoff notices was a commitment. The school board made a commitment to schools and parents to bring talented new educators into our communities and to support the important work that happens in our schools. They brought all these wonderful people into our education family and now they're being threatened with jo job loss. The state legislature made a commitment to provide the necessary funding so that we could build a quality education program for all our students. And now that commitment is being ignored? That's just unacceptable. What's most fr frustrating for those of us who work closest to schools is how disconnected too many of our policymakers, these accepted, are from what's now happening on the ground right now in our public schools in San Diego. Our students, our students are worried and stressed because they don't know what will happen to the teachers they have come to rely on and to trust. Educators are frightened, humiliated, and demoralized by the insecurity of knowing that the well-being of themselves, their careers, and their families lie in the hands of a gridlocked legislature in Sacramento. Right here in San Diego, we have one school where 24 of 26 teachers receive layoff notices. There they are. Jackson Elementary. Hang in there. Hang in there we have one middle school right next to Jackson Elementary that stands to lose all but one teacher. And yet San Diego is the only large urban district in the entire country to meet our federal testing benchmarks under No Child Left Behind. Yeah. So we have to ask, why are our students being punished? Why are our educators being punished? And why are our schools, the foundation of our democracy, being destroyed by this proposed budget? As a teacher, I know that children need a stable learning environment in order to learn, grow, and reach their full potential. Every child in California should expect a stable group of teachers and support staff to build a strong learning environment. They should expect a, a clean and well-maintained school campus, enough books and materials to complete their important work, exciting and challenging opportunities like well-stocked labs, field trips, and outdoor learning experiences. All children should know that a quality public school, the right of every American child, is waiting for them in San Diego. This budget is a giant step backwards for our students and our schools. Less funding means larger class sizes, less one-on-one -on -one attention for students, fewer nurses and counselors to keep our children healthy 
It means cutting music, vocational education, art, field trips, and extracurricular activities. And less people taking care of our schools to keep them clean, organized, and well equipped for our students. We need all the people who make our schools work. We simply cannot do more with less. We appeal to our state legislators and to our school boards to fix this budget. Don't balance this budget on the backs of children. Don't take away the teachers whose dedication to children brought them to this career. Don't put kids in danger by cutting the nurses and taking away the many people who make our classrooms work, our custodians, cafeteria workers, teaching assistants, secretaries, security staff, and the bus drivers who keep our kids safe and healthy. Don't shirk your duty to properly fund public education at a level that doesn't punish children. And don't make quality public schools a thing of the past in California. Everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Allison Schlick, Vice President of Legislation for San Diego Unified Council of PTAs, which encompasses the geographic area of all of the San Diego City Schools, including this one. Within San Diego, SDUC PTA oversees 94 PTA associations with 15,000 members in the San Diego Unified School District. One of our organizing purposes is to develop between the education community, that's you, and the general public, that's you out in TV land, united efforts, not, not, not coming apart efforts, but united efforts to secure for all children and youth the highest advantages in their physical, mental, social, and overall academic education. I am both an advocate for all children in the San Diego City School area, as well as a parent volunteer and mother of two children at Erickson Elementary School in Mira Mesa. And I also want to take just a second to thank my employer, Qualcomm Incorporated, for supporting volunteerism and allowing me to be here today to speak. PTA is here today to protest these disastrous cuts to education that have been proposed in the state budget. This budget does not reflect the priorities of our community and the citizens of this state as a parent. I want my children and the children of this state to have the same educational opportunities as I did when I attended California schools in the 1980s and 1990s. I benefited from career counseling. Why not these kids? Gifted and talented programs, extracurricular programs were, were available, including sports and both practical and fine arts programs. These are likely to be the first to be cut. My education would have been a pale shade of gray had it not included these fine facets and would have been a poor investment in my potential had these programs, not to mention the basics, which is what is on the cutting block this, this year, if they had not been provided. I believe that every dollar spent in public education is a worthy investment and that the futures of our children will skyrocket and pave the way for our state's economic comeback and steady growth. But this year, this investment is being thrown out like the baby with the bathwater. We've already talked about how California spends less than the national average. And as a result, we have the most overcrowded classrooms, the greatest shortage of counselors, librarians, and support staff in the nation. If California public education were a car, it's already a car that's had the paint stripped and the mirrors broken, but it's running, and we're, we're, we're increasing our we're increasing our uh, achievements, our test scores, but we're not looking so good. Now we're being asked to cut even more. Here in San Diego, pink slips are already going out as our school district braces for these cuts. My son, a first grader, his teacher has gotten a pink slip, and she's a phenomenal teacher. Many other teachers at my child's school have received pink slips, and, and, and why? For those of you that aren't, aren't sure why these pink slips are being handed out, it's to create larger class sizes, thus saving on money. Well, I was thinking about it last night, and ponder this. How many mice can you fit in a, mou in a mouse house? How many mice? Till it just becomes intolerable. I'll tell you what, I don't want to know, and I don't want our kids to be put in that situation. 
We've worked so hard for class size reduction. And we know it works. We know that it improves teaching. It improves the educational environment and improves how well our students ultimately learn as measured by test scores. We have to speak up now to keep these modest improvements in place. Class sizes and other grade levels will increase, counselors are being cut, and we will lose reading specialists and other important student interventions. In the few districts that have them, we will likely lose art and music classes, which keep at risk and other students engaged academically. It sure did for me. For these students, these cuts will last a lifetime. Cutting education is not the right solution to the budget crisis. It is a short-term fix, especially suspending Prop 98. It's simply borrowing against the future. We're going to have to pay it back. Don't do it. Don't suspend Prop 98. We believe our students deserve better, and the future of our state depends on the investments we make in education. We need our community's help in holding our legislators accountable to the promise they made to make education one of their top priorities. For all of our children and all of these six million children attending California's public schools. H have you thought about this? Six million children? Over six million children. This is the largest educational endeavor in the history of the world. It's worth investment to make it work. It takes investment to make it work. This is not only our children's future, this will impact the future of all of us in the state of California. Whether or not you have children, whether or not you plan to have children, think about it. It's all of our futures. If you're watching this today, please take action. Write to your legislator, call your state senator, write a letter to the editor, and maintain our community's investments in education. Thank you again. Good morning. My name. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Good morning. My name is Terry Minot, and I am an attendance technician. I work for Vista Unified School District. I, I also represent California school employees. I sit on the board of, of board of directors for California school employees. These are California school employees. Yeah. Yeah. School employees like myself provide essential services for students teachers, administrators. We take care of campus safety, cleaning, attendance records, transportation, medication of schedules, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and other vital services that go into providing a high quality education. A state budget cut of $4.8 million is equivalent to cutting more than 137,000 school bus drivers, custodians, instructional paraeducators, food service workers, school clerks, maintenance workers, security officers, and other vital school staff. School employees have always been willing to make sacrifices for our students, but these cuts will permanently hurt our schools and our students. I don't think any parent in our community wants their teachers to worry about what to do if the faucets aren't working or if the lights don't come on. That's our job. We're the ones who make sure that students are safe at school, we feed them, we make them comfortable, we account for them. We are the eyes and ears of the school campus, the watchful adults, allowing the teachers to concentrate on teaching. Cuts of this magnitude that the governor is proposing will deeply affect all of our schools. This is why we are hopeful that the legislator will reject, I repeat, reject the governor's proposed education budget cuts and uphold Proposition 98, the school funding guarantee. Voters passed Prop 98 almost 20 years ago to ensure our students in schools get at least a minimum funding level from year to year. And the people affirmed their support for this important law during the 2005 special election. Now the governor needs to really, really hear the voices of the people, our children, must always be our first priority. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jack Leaf. I'm president and CEO of Arena Pharmaceuticals. Arena is a biotechnology company. 
And as many of you know, the biotechnology industry dis discovers and develops many of the new medicines and treatments that we all will depend upon to make our lives better in the future. Some of you may not understand or know that California accounts for about a third of all of the biotechnology companies in this country. That means over half a million jobs that are directly related to the biotechnology industry, and San Diego is a leader in this area. So for Arena Pharmaceuticals, when we started the company a little over 10 years ago, we started with three employees. Today we have about 450 employees just a couple miles away from here, and about 85% of these are R&D. So research and development is what drives our industry, where the new medicines, the new treatments come from. Who will develop these in the future? The answer is basically that we need to have good education for our, for our children. Um, the education that our children receive must provide good math skills, good communication skills, good scientific skills. Without these, the industry that California leads will no longer be possible in this state. And people overseas in other countries or in other states will take over that leadership role. I want to keep that leadership in California, and I think that this is important. We should be reducing our class sizes, not increasing our class sizes. So, so with that, it's up to everybody here to make your voices known that we're talking about the future workers in an important industry that leads the world uh, in, in this life science uh, field. So thank you very much. Hello, I'm Catherine Nakamura. I'm president of the Board of Education of this fine school district that we are standing in. And I want to say that we've done our homework in this district. It's one of the things we do in education well. We have passed adequate yearly progress under No Child Left Behind. We are not the only large urban school district in the state to do that. We are only one of 15 in the country to do that. We have... We have some of the finest teachers, staff, administrators in the country. That teacher that you saw, that award-winning teacher who was up here, is not the only award-winning teacher we've got in this district who got a pink slip. But we do our homework. And when it came down in December that things were looking bad and that the governor of this California right before Christmas and the holiday retail season and his brilliance announces to the world that California is in a state of crisis so Christmas sales were down even further. We did our homework. We started working and we started looking at the numbers. In January when he reconfirmed that we started holding budget workshops, five of them, and we took this district apart. We took department by department by department. We looked at every school and then we went back to the central office and we looked again. The cuts were originally going to be 10 to 15 percent, not only for the central office, but also for the schools. This Board of Education said that's not going to fly. And we went back and we shook the central office and we shook it hard. And the cuts at the schools are only going to be 5 percent. How that translates, however, is still devastating. We've done our homework. We have turned over every rock. We have took every opportunity we can. We're looking at a parcel tax. We're looking at closing schools. We are not leaving anything to chance because our children's education in this state is at stake. And we know it because we've done our homework. Now let's take a look at the governor of California. Has he done his homework? No. Well, let's stop. Let's be fair. Let's think of this as a science project. In a science project, correct, you have a research paper that you write and then you have a lab or a project that you build. He's done the research report. Students First it was a years long project where we studied spending in this state and it very clearly, unequivocally 
tells us, as we have heard from speaker and speaker and speaker again, that we are not doing what we need to do by our children. Okay, so let's look at the laboratory that he's supposed to be doing for this project. How he's supposed to support it. Well, I would call that the budget of the state of California. Governor, you're flunking. You can't turn in a research report and then not turn in the laboratory. Okay? We've got to find an answer to make this work. I'm a native Californian. My kids are in the schools. My husband teaches at the university. My mother taught. I mean, I am surrounded in education, and I can tell you it is absolutely hurting. We've done our homework again, however. We've reached out. We talked to our communities. Sheila Jackson, my esteemed colleague here on the Board of Education, we've asked her to coordinate the legislative outlook as we've taken apart the budget. She's done outreach, but I want to tell you, and I'm sure she'll tell you herself in a few moments, when we knock on that door and we have been asking legislators whether or not they've done their homework, there have been legislators who have answered the door, who've come to class, and there have been legislators who have not up in Sacramento. There have been legislators who, when we ask for an appointment, don't have an appointment to give. There have been legislators who a few weeks ago had an appointment to give, but as of today have canceled. There's a significant number of legislators here who are turning in their homework today, however. Yes. Yes. And when it's time to vote, I want you to remember who stood with you and who didn't. Who did their homework? And I expect you to turn it in, just like any good teacher who's examining their students, and turn it in that, you know, turn in that report card and let us know. At this time, I'd like to ask um, Sheila Jackson, uh, our, <laughs> our one of our board members, to speak. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but we do have some work, and I'm going to be very brief today because we have people here that are going to stand with us. It is true. We called each and every local legislator, and we asked them to meet with us. And there were people that refused to meet with board members from the Unified School District. That is totally unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Totally unacceptable. But we're going to put our list out for you here in a little bit. I got one for you, baby. But let's talk about something else, the governor's proposed budget. Over the last few weeks, we've had a number of press conferences, and he said that his budget was 10% across the board. Was that not true? 10% across the board. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, he didn't cut prisons 10%. All right. There is a proposed increase for prisons of 1.7. Now, you tell me what leader would put prisons over students? Yeah. Now, when we asked why are we building more prisons, they said, we're looking at the current fourth grade students. And based upon who is not doing well, who is not reading in the fourth grade, we're going to build them a prison bed. Now, is that the kind of leadership that you want leading your state? No. So we do have a problem. We need to have leadership that's going to say if a fourth grader is not reading, they're going to invest in that fourth grader. They're going to invest in education because what we want is leadership that produces global citizens, not leadership that builds inmates for America. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi. My name's Christine Kehoe. I'm the state senator for San Diego, and I want to thank all of you for being here. I'm going to introduce the legislators that are turning in their homework. First, I want to say thank you so much for joining us here today and for standing out in the beautiful sunshine with us. Thank you to uh, Sarah High School for allowing us to come on your campus. Thank you to Principal Mike Jimenez. Your, your students and your staff have been terrific. It's been a pleasure visiting with you. Uh, I want to thank San Diego Education Association. I want to thank the Parent Teachers Association, and I want to thank the school district. All of us pitched in together to make this gathering possible and give us a chance to talk and listen to you. Um, I want to tell you how moved I've been by every story I've heard today uh, from the parents, 
from students, from teachers, from employees, from executives. Whether you're in any of those categories, you are committed to a better school system for our students and for the future of California. And I thank you for that, every one of you. Thank you. We're, we're here to send a loud and clear message to Governor Schwarzenegger and any legislator who was willing to cut schools that the people of San Diego don't want these cuts. We all know that we're in a tough budget year. The governor wants to cut almost $5 billion from the education funding from across the state. We're here to say that cannot happen and we're going to work together to stop that. California, yeah. you. you heard from Jack Leaf from a startup pharmaceutical company homegrown right here in San Diego who needs scientists, technicians, and other kinds of employees for years to come. California's economy is growing and evolving. So is San Diego. We're a high-tech, biotech, life sciences, computer-oriented uh, economy that's not your old-fashioned economy anymore. Our students have to be forward-thinking and technologically adept. Our students didn't create the problems we're facing, and yet they'll be the ones to pay the costs if these cuts come true. What would these costs mean for our schools? You've heard that teachers and parents talk about it. San Diego County could lose nearly $360 million under the governor's plan. Hundreds and hundreds of teachers have received their pink slip. A full 10% of the district employees have received a pink slip. Nurses, counselors, special ed teachers, librarians, support staff, out the window. Principals may be placed in charge of two schools, like they're not busy enough handling one. And class sizes will get larger and larger. We recognize that there are going to be some tough choices to make this year. We need to make those choices together in partnership. We have to uh, be in communication. This is not going to be over next week. It's not going to be over next month. We need to work on a long-term effort to roll back these cuts and keep California's school budget whole. Now, cuts now are exactly what we should not be doing. Now's the time to invest in our students at our school. Now's the time to invest in California's future. We want you to stand with us and say classrooms come first. And now I, I'm, I want to introduce to you some terrific people that are here to listen to you and we've been talking and want to explain to you what our plan is. First, my colleague from the assembly here in San Diego, Lori Saldana. Yeah. So I did do my homework. We have been doing our homework in Sacramento and we know that there are ways to avoid the cuts that the governor has been promoting. We know that there are other ways to solve this budget crisis and to say 10% across the board is not only not doing your homework, it's sort of saying the dog ate my homework. <laughs> and so all I can tell you is here's 10%, figure it out on your own. That's lazy. And as a former teacher, I would tell the governor as a student, you go back and you recalculate those numbers and show me your work because I don't believe that you came up. <laughs> the teachers get that. The math teachers get that. Show me your work because you came up with the wrong answer and I want to know where you went off track. Why? <laughs> Why is it okay to take away tax credits from teachers for school supplies, but then leave tax loopholes in place for people who want to go and buy a yacht? Yeah. Yeah. No big oil. <laughs> and we have brought forward proposals, and we are getting turned down left and right. But I will tell you, you are the ones that need to go and talk, not to us. We are here listening to you, and you know that we are on the side of teachers, on the side of counselors, of students, of everyone that makes our school successful. We are on your side. You need to talk to the people who are not here today. And there was a gentleman here earlier, I don't know where he went, from the military. California has 10% of the military families in our nation. 10%. And what are we telling their children when their parents are deployed, when their parents are putting their lives on the line? We're telling them, if you're transferred to California, we can't give you a quality education yeah. while you serve your country. Yeah. What message is that for the rest of the country? So help us in Sacramento. The people that do not take the meetings, those are the ones that you just show up. You just go to their offices, and you don't leave until you talk to them. 
We want to talk to you. We will listen to you. But we're not the ones that need to hear from you. The ones that need to hear from you are the ones who are not here today. And we won't give you names, but I'm sure somebody else will. <laughs> And you tell them there are solutions to this, and we want you to put teachers and students before the yacht owners in California. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Folks, two senators, Jack Scott from Pasadena, who is the chair of the Senate Budget Committee, and Senator Gloria Romero of Los Angeles are going to join us now. Please give a nice welcome. Well, I'm going to be brief. There's two things I want to point out. One is the kind of cuts that we're contemplating and the pink slips that have already gone out sends a message to all college students, don't go into the teaching profession. That's, right. that's a tragic message that's being sent, but it's being sent loud and, loud and clear. Now, the second message I want to tell you is I'm going to get right down to what we need to do. We keep talking about doing our homework. Well, I'll tell you what the homework says. That in order for us to avoid these cuts, we've got to look at ways to raise revenues in the state of California. Today, my wife and I had lunch. It cost us $19. Do you think it would have bothered me to pay one more cents on a sales tax in order to help our schools? That would have been a grand total of 19 cents. And yet if we did that, we could raise five and one half billion dollars and we could take care of that 4.4 billion that the governor wants to take away. Now you don't need to tell that message to me because I'm gonna be one who raises his hand when time comes to raise taxes in order to save our schools. But there are some people that you're going to have to put some pressure on. Now, there was a, a female legislator in the 19th century in Iowa who spoke before a group of farmers, and she said to them, you need to, to raise a little less corn and more hell. So I'm going to tell you that there's some people, and I'm going to be brave enough to say that they've got an R behind their name, and they're saying we're not going to raise taxes. We will rather punish the school children of California than to raise taxes. Over 50% of Californians are now saying, by their opinion, yes, we're willing to pay more in order to save our schools. So you're going to have to put the pressure because we've got to get a two-thirds vote out of the legislature. And I'll guarantee you, if we get a two-thirds vote out of the legislature, the governor will come around. So I'm going to tell you this. If you really want to know where the pressure belongs, it belongs on the legislators who are mildly saying, not, oh, yes, they will tell you they're all for schools, but when it really gets down to it, it's rhetoric and it's not money. And we've got to put the pressure so that people are willing to say, okay, maybe we need to raise revenues on a temporary basis to avoid this drastic and horrific cut that is uh, forecast for the schools of California. Thank you very much. Yo soy senadora Gloria Romero, algunas palabras en español. Hay más de 6 millones de estudiantes en California y casi la mitad son latinos. Y nuestras escuelas tienen que seguir siendo competitivas. Estos recortes van a destruir a las escuelas públicas. Y no podemos continuar pidiéndolas a nuestros estudiantes y a las, y a las escuelas también que hagan más con menos recursos. Nuestro futuro económico depende de la calidad de la educación pública. Si nuestros niños sueñan con la promesa de igualdad para sus comunidades, hay que echarles la mano para lograr esa visión. Háganos llamar al gobernador para echar su mal plan de recortes. Basically, in English, I said, we've got to call the governor. This is about the American dream. Education is the, is the civil rights issue of our community. Half of the children in California are Latino children in English and in Spanish. These budget cuts are bad for all of California. Thank you. And also, now welcome from San Diego, Senator Denise Duchenne. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and we do appreciate all of you being here today and, and, and hearing the stories directly from teachers, directly from students. One of our challenges this year um, as we move toward trying to figure out how to get out of this budget problem is getting people to understand the practical reality. The governor says 10% across the board and makes it sound easy. And, and until you actually s get down to what does that mean in a classroom, what does that mean at the school, what does that mean to a family, um, it's very hard. And, and what's important about what y'all are doing here today and, and doing more of this and spreading it throughout our community is having people understand what do government services provide. Somebody said it earlier, we are the wealthiest state and the wealthiest nation in the world. There is something wrong with a picture that says we can't fund our schools, we can't provide spaces for our students at universities, that we can't provide health care to our senior citizens and our most vulnerable populations. There is something wrong with that picture. Um, a lot of us, as somebody else said, grew up in California. We all remember, some of us even remember when you could go to UC without paying $6,000. Um, and, and, and we need that promise of California. It's why those businesses like Qualcomm and Biocom are here. The reason those biotechs are here in San Diego is because of UCSD and because of the work we've done to invest in our, in our workforce. It's the research and development. Those are the jobs that are driving California, whether it's Silicon Valley, San Diego, Los Angeles, or, or the Central Valley. A lot of what's driving our economy now are renewable energy, environmental technologies, all of the new things. And you know what they'll tell us? Some of the first things to go when you start cutting education are like art and music, and we heard the choir, you might lose your choir here next year. You've got a new choir teacher doing a great job, and suddenly he's on the possible cut list. Um, you know, they tell us we need people with imaginations. They'll tell us in Silicon Valley, you know, we're looking for engineers, but we're not looking for robots. We're looking for people who know how to do things, who can put things together, who can have imaginations, who are creative, and we need art and music and culture and all of that to help them get there. Um, this really is. This really is about the future of California, and my only major plea to all of us is to recognize that this is a community-wide issue. There are any number of very difficult choices we are going to be asked to make before this year is over. Um, we do need people to decide in their own hearts and in their own families that they're willing to pay a little more someplace along the road. Um, and people have to make that choice, and our community has to hear it, and our legislature and our governor have to hear it, that people do believe it's worth investing that people do understand that, you know, the two biggest, you'll hear a lot of rhetoric this year about expenditure increases in the budget in the last few years. Um, you know what those were mostly? It's the prisons. Yeah. Sheila talked about that. Yeah. And guess what? We know about three things about most prisoners. They mostly don't have a high school diploma. Yeah. They mostly have a, a substance abuse or, or drug or alcohol problem that we haven't addressed in the community setting. And 70% of them are former foster kids. Something is wrong with a picture that says you failed them once, you failed them, get them, get them through school, they didn't get a GED, and they ended up in prison costing us more than it cost to send somebody to Harvard. Yeah. There is something wrong with that picture. Um, and we need a community to come together to help us figure out how to, re how to keep our public safety and still reduce our costs of incarceration. That takes community effort. It takes all of us working together with the probation officers and the parole officers and drug treatment facilities and a lot of other things, foster care systems, child welfare systems. It's a community effort and most of it is focused on our children and the core place where we do the most services to them is right here in the schools. Um, we, 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 the school board has done, you know, a, a good job exposing exactly what does this mean and trying to examine their budgets and seeing what they're doing, um, what they can do. Um, and we are hugely hopeful that they will not have to take the steps, but at least they've outlined it. We're doing the same thing, and you should know that our budget committees are going line by line. We are finding things the governor didn't, um, that we, in the bureaucracy that aren't direct services to schools, direct services to families, we are trying our best to find all of that before um, we, we move on anything uh, that, that would cut education or cut um, basic services to all our families. So thank you all very much for being here and for supporting us and for helping us find those solutions. We do need help. Uh, we do need everybody to be together. 
uh, and we need to keep hearing from you and having you participate with us uh, over the next couple of months as we come to the place where we have to make some final choices for the 0809 budget. And with that, um, I, I, I have the pleasure uh, of introducing to you um, the leader of our Senate, uh, our President Pro Tem, who came all the way down here from Oakland and via Sacramento, because that's where we were this week earlier, um, who's a former high school teacher, so who yeah. actually knows who you are, um, who's been in your shoes, who, who knows what this is about, and who has led us, at least, in, in having this dialogue and, and saying to the governor, this is just not acceptable, as people have said earlier. Senator Don Parada. Thank you. So I did come, <coughs> I did come all the way from Oakland, um, and on my way I brought a pair of sunglasses because I was coming, <laughs> coming to San Diego. I'm also batting ninth, as you probably can tell, so it means a good field, no hit. So let me get right to the point. I think uh, everybody who's spoken here today has uh, repeatedly said the things that all of California needs to hear and needs to respond to. This should not be a partisan issue. There is no Republican or Democratic way to educate a child. There is, <clears throat> there are not Republican children that don't deserve to be educated. There are no Democratic kids that should be left out. We live in a society, in a democracy. In fact, people who live across the street have parents fighting to give Iraq the democracy that we have in America. And what we say about America is the cornerstone is education, public education, the great equalizer. You can go on any court in the country and play the game if you're educated. And yet, what we're doing belies all of that. There's something fundamentally wrong. Now, no one who works with our governor dislikes him. He is not there to tear down California. He is sincere. But remember, he was elected in a recall. He never had to pass a test of a debate where he said, what's your vision? He basically ran against Sacramento. I mean, that's cheap sport. <laughs> he never had to even show up at a debate. He went, on, he went on Leno's program to announce. He went on other programs. It was basically a feel-good campaign. And he took out, surprised a lot of us, and I think in, including the governor, he took out Gray Davis. He is now doing what Gray Davis was re, uh, recalled for doing, the exact same thing. But I do think the Californians are beginning to get the message because his popularity is dropping. He is now down into the 40s. Pretty soon he's going to be where we are. <clears throat> That's what we call a fair fight. And I know that this is a proud man. He does not want to leave California in two and a half years with his legacy of being one of mediocrity. But I'll tell you, if we were to cut 4.4, 4.8, whatever the billions out of K-12 education, and pass his whatever he wants to put on the ballot to freeze it in place, we are telling Californians, you can't ever expect any better than you got right now. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, who in the hell is going to be in California if that's the case? <laughs> who? There's a cluster of young women here who are all being furloughed from their jobs. They teach the future of California. They're going to provide the guys out in the street who are going to protect you. They're going to be the ones that are going to discover the cure for prostate cancer, breast cancer, the next generation of drugs that will make people who are depressed functional. This is not complicated stuff. Now, I will tell you this. My Republican colleagues have taken a no-tax pledge. However, they took it last year. Things have gotten quite a bit worse this year. A lot of them are very bright people. They will be able to figure this out. But right now they're saying, oh, we're not going to cut education. Well, let me tell you what the options are. We could defund the University of California system once the pride of the world in 
public education, we could defund it and let 100,000 prisoners out of our correction system and not balance the budget. Now imagine what the alternatives are. So my question is, well, what do you intend to cut? Where do you intend to cut to come up with $8 billion? The answer is it cannot be done. We gave Californians, under the first act the governor took, we gave Californians back $6 billion in taxes we collected annually on their automobiles. The dumbest damn thing I ever did was to vote for that. But I never thought we'd ever do it. And we have. So we are now permanently down $6 billion. Can you imagine a state that was not taxing its automobiles? Hell, you know the old joke, your automobile, your life. Give me a minute. <laughs> but that's where this deficit came from. We gave back something that we should have never given away, and we had no right to give it away because we are giving away the future of these kids. So I say to every Republican, I will make cuts with you to non-essential services. I'm not taking a wheelchair away from somebody. I'm not telling an autistic child, get a work permit, and get a job. What I'm going to tell them is, we'll make the cuts, because they never think Democrats will make any cuts. They think we're put uh, wimps. I know, I know, I thought you thought. I didn't come all the way down here to say things like that. So we will make some cuts, and we're going to hear some howling, because everybody wants somebody else to get cut. But in some way, in some time this year, we are going to balance whatever fat that we're going to trim from state government with an increase in revenues so that education is not going to be the one injured. And we're not, I've told my caucus, if you get in any tickets to travel, make sure you got a refundable one. If you're planning to go to the Democratic Convention in Denver in August, TiVo it. I wouldn't even make plans comfortably for the World Series. Because as long as it takes to stay, we are going to stay. We're not going to do it rancorously. We're not going to do it by finger pointing and name calling. But we are going to do it with resolve and commitment. That we did not come to Sacramento representing communities like this one to savage the future of this state. We have a moral responsibility to make sure that as we leave this earth, we leave it better than when we got here. And we are going in the wrong direction. So let me ask all of you, we didn't have enough cards, but we have, everybody's got a website now, so I thought, well, shit, we'll have a website. We didn't discover websites, but we're using a lot of them. <laughs> Classroomsfirst.com is a virtual campaign headquarters. I thought I'd never talk this way, Jesus. <laughs> but nonetheless, you go on to that, and if you didn't sign a card, you can sign on. What we are doing is going around the state to generate volunteers. But if you, you know, if you go to Sacramento, you're wasting your time. It's kind of like going to Disneyland and thinking that's reality. <laughs> We're not much different up there. It's a bubble. Well, you've got to take the fight is to the community of opinion leaders and people who provide the jobs. Mr. Leaf, God bless him for being here. Mr. Leaf said, if you don't have a strong educational system, I don't have 450 employees discovering the next generation of medicines for this country and the world. All right? Simple. We got to get every Fortune 100 company in California, every privately held company in California that provide jobs, and we have to ring their bell and say, you keep saying education is the future of our economy. We need your help. You got to get into the game. So we're going to be asking people to, we're going to organize people to go and ask the CEO for a straight up eyeball meeting. Don't waste your time talking to a, a legislator that you elected and they don't want, it doesn't want to talk to you. That's just, that's just wrong, but we ain't got time for that. He's still going to get per diem every single day. 
just for being in Sacramento, represent your interests. But we start talking to the CEOs. We start going to where they are and leafleting in their parking lots. Talk to their employees. We gotta take the fight to the people who can be allies with us. This is not a Republican issue, a Democratic issue. This is an issue about the future of this state. This year was coming ever since Prop 13 passed. It was a day of reckoning. It is here. We are either going to overcome it or it will overwhelm us. California has the highest cost of living. We will soon have the lowest standard of living. Let's yeah. fight it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. That's it. If you want questions from Mr. Parada, he's here.